Right, hello, and it is the morning after the night before here at the lab. So, what does a geek do when his head is oh so slightly sore? Well, he drinks tea, if he's British. <clears throat> hmm. Very nice. And he does some fixing, or in this case, preventative maintenance. Now, the Mac SE, as you'll have seen in recent videos, if you haven't, link below, uh, was picked out of the trash recently. And computers at this age, well, computers have, in case you don't know, uh, battery backups that keep the time. And at the age of this one, 25, going up to 30 years old for some of the computers around here, those batteries tend to explode. Uh, computers that suffer from this are Macintosh, uh, your Amiga 500 Pluses, the Archimedes, systems like that. They have battery backups and they can explode. And when they explode, they spurt acid everywhere. Well, can do. All over your motherboard. Now, if this is caught early, uh, often it be, can be cleaned up and some lightly affected components repaired. If this is left and not picked up, this can eat through the traces, eat through the board, destroy the computer basically. Uh, and that will ruin your whole week. No geek sizing for a long time, at least on that system. So, it is important when you pick up a computer like this that you go in and check the battery. Now this is working at the moment, as you know, if you've seen the videos, this is a working system. So, hopefully, it shouldn't be too bad. It, the battery that is in there, we'll take a look at it, put it on the multimeter, uh, see what readings it's got. If it's bulging, it'll come out. It'll probably come out anyway. So, thanks to Andy Taylor, who provided me with the appropriate screwdriver to get into the Macintosh SE because they have their own uh, screws and because they're deep inside the system you need a long one. Now let's operate shall we? Another quick sip of tea. Mm. Lovely. Right now to get into the Mac SE I have not done this before but it doesn't look like rocket science. Uh, basically four screws on the back two I get this the best place for you to see <laughs> right there were two here then two feel like a teacher pointing on the on the old uh, backboard and two in there one two so first of all we need to get them out Right, obviously because they're so deep in there, see in there, no, they're deep, I can't just pick them out, so I'm going to try and get them to drop out. And just typical, one doesn't come out. It's a smick at the bottom when I get it. There she comes, so they're the top. They're the bottom. Right, okay. Next job is to get this panel, back panel, off. <coughs> that was easier than I thought. Okay, so there's the back panel. Yeah, I'll go to clean while we're in there. Uh, a bit of chawing there, and ta da! Here's the system itself. Okay, while we're in here, remember, that is a cathode ray tube. You can probably touch around here, but do not mess with this wire here. That can carry up to 20,000 volts in some systems. Uh, probably less than this, but it's still enough to potentially kill you. So, very careful around that. And this flyback transformer, which provides the voltage to it. Be careful around that too. Now, not having been in here before, I don't know where the battery is, so my next task 
is to actually find it. Okay, and it's out. It's just out of shot at the moment. What I found was that there were three leads. Uh, you can see here. We have the hard drive lead. I think that's a hard drive. Mm -hmm. Nope, that's the floppy lead. Hard drive lead here and a power lead here. All going through the chassis to the motherboard. And once they're out, it just slides back, which is great. So here is the motherboard itself. I've put it back on the metal shielding to protect it. And I'm just going to put my jumper on because I got rather hot doing that. Right. Okay, that's better. Now, here's what we said is the motherboard. And down here, you can see... Focus. Are you going to focus? I'm going to kick you in the nads, Beavis. Right, that Vorta thing there is our victim for today's operation. Let's go out a little bit. Let's try and get it to focus. Try. Okay, there we go. Now that's our Vorta battery. And uh, looking around it, this one, excuse my ignorance here, this one is in good condition. No problems, there's no bulging or anything. Now, we are going to remove it just for safety. All that will mean is that it doesn't remember its clock. But when you're using the system just for you now experimentation and playing games, that's not really too much of a concern. Now, okay. What we're going to do is get a quick reading of the multimeter of this battery. Just out of curiosity, I suppose. And there's the multimeter. And we'll see how much life it's still got in it. So plus on there, minus on there. And it's providing... Do -do -do. I'm impressed. It's providing 3 volts. Which is what it's supposed to do. That is quite amazing. Wow. At this age. This is uh, guns and stickers around here. Made in 1988. But I don't want to keep coming in here anyway. So I am going to remove it. And I'm just waiting for my soldering iron to heat up. And I'll be right back. Right, we're back and we've now got an incredibly stained carpet because, excuse me, while the iron was heating up I took the opportunity to have a uh, bit of a clean up at the board which was rather dirty and I've done the same on the system which was again rather dirty so you're going to have to be cleaning that carpet I think but okay, the iron should now be hot enough so I'm going to remove this one just check. Ooh. <laughs> I'm going to remove the battery there. So. Right, a few minutes later, battery is missing. Battery is here. And all I did was put the soldering iron on the underside, heated each leg as I pulled, and uh, out it comes. So, all that remains is to put the system back together and uh, fire her up. I'll be right back. As usual. Okay, just a, a small warning if you're thinking of doing this, because I've been struggling, to say the least. Now, see that little white thing there? That is a plug that came off as I pulled the motherboard out. It's a cable that goes down to the front. It looks like it powers a speaker or something. But it is a pain in the ass to get back in. Because when you push the board fully in, 
the hole is right off to the side and there's no way unless you've got the world's most dexterous fingers you can ever get that back in. So I've had to pull it tight, pull the motherboard, push the motherboard in and just get it in as the motherboard goes in. It's just long enough to do that but even that is a struggle. So that's just a warning for you if you're contemplating this. You may have trouble. Okay, several fiddly minutes later and we got the back Mac back to a position where we can test it. Now I did have trouble with that lead as I said and then on the IDE ports the cables are fiddly to get in and one of the pins got bent so I had to bend that back so hopefully cross your fingers and everything else helps if I plug it in. Sorry about my nakedness but I got a bit warm uh, operating on this so let's see Good sound, that's good. Our drives are spinning up, that's also good. Floppy drives powering. Is she gonna play the game? Yep, it's going for it. Which is good. And hopefully, as we said, that should just have affected the clock. Uh, we'll just let it boot and see. In fact, while it's entertaining you with the music, I'll just go down and fetch your mouse. Now, I don't get that. It's a big mystery. <sighs> Can't really put them in. Right, what I'm going to do is switch it off, and there's a mystery here because it seems to have kept the time. How strange. Let me power it down, uh, we'll put it back together, put the system back together, and we'll have a look at that clock, run it a few times, and see if it keeps the time. Strange, shouldn't be doing that. Hmm. Okay, you're rejoining this again. What I've done, I rebooted it before, and I set the clock to 1300. I then powered it down, and unplugged it for a few moments. And I've rebooted it. And... Scary. How does it know the time? I even took the power lead out. And it's still keeping the time. It's possessed. So, it appears that taking the battery out doesn't affect the clock. It must be using a uh, capacitance or something to keep the time. Imagine if uh, this was left for a day or so, that clock would go. But for short terms, yes, it seems to keep it, even without that battery, so it must be using capacitance somewhere. Obviously, it doesn't affect the desktop or anything like that because that's all on the hard drive. So, there we go. That's how to remove a battery, one in this case was perfectly okay, from the Macintosh SE. This also applies to the entire Macintosh Classic range. So, there you go. What's the date on this? 87. Hmm, okay. 1987, that was still powering. Amazing. So, thank you all very much.